Hey, we're going to look at the Boolean logic a little bit more and we're going to actually look at the logic laws that allow you to simplify expressions. So this is simplification. Now simplification is not my strong point so I'll show you a little bit about how you would look up the laws and how you might apply them uh, but I won't go into huge amounts of detail. So I realize this is quite big but here we've got a list of the logic laws. Now if you look through the numbering you'll find that some of the laws are missing and that's because for the computer science course I teach you do not need to know them. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at a few expressions and using these laws we'll try and simplify them. So we'll start off with something fairly easy. We've got A or B and B or C. And what we do is we start off by looking through all the laws and see if we can find anything that looks like it fits this structure. So the first one, law 1, A and B is equivalent to B and A. It doesn't really look like the structure we're working with. Part of it does, but the rest of it doesn't. Law 2 doesn't apply, or 3. Law 4 getting closer but it doesn't have those two sets of brackets and no common variable so we'll cross that one off cross off law five there is no knots in there um, and we'll look at law seven and if we look here we've got a or b and a or c now it's got a common factor in that one which is a or now we don't have a common factor of a or but we do have a common factor of b or so over here, it's taken it out. So we can take our B or out. And then in the example given, in the two brackets, it was an OR and an OR. And between them was an AND. We've got an OR, an OR, and between them is an AND. So we take that AND and we put it into our brackets. We take our A and we take our C and we pop it in there. And so using law 7, we have simplified our expression. Now that's only been one step of simplification. Um, and this process has been we've looked through our laws and tried to find one that matches exactly what we're doing. And we've worked with that aspect of it. So let's try something that has maybe one or more steps of simplification. Okay, so we're going to work with the expression not, not a or B, or not B, or C. So, sorry, that's a little bit scrappy. And what I'm looking for is, I've got a lot of knots, I've got a lot of brackets, so I want to break it down a little bit. So, I start by wondering, is there any way I can get rid of this knot and set of brackets? So, I'm looking for a way that takes a knot that's outside of brackets and seeing if I can get rid of the brackets. And I look through and I look through and I go, oh, law 10 has a knot outside of the brackets. The brackets contain something with an or. We get rid of the brackets by applying the knot to both of the items in the brackets and changing the or to an and. So we're going to start off with that. So our not a already has a knot, so it becomes not not a. The or becomes an and and we apply the not to the b as well, so that becomes not b. Then we'll keep the rest of our expression as it was. And I'm just going to put in brackets underneath that we used law 10 to get that. Now we might also start wondering about this not not a. And I'm sure most people have heard of this concept of a double negative is a positive. And if we look at law 6, the law of negation tells us if we've got a double not, we can get rid of it. So our not not a becomes a, and then we keep the rest and not b, or not b, or c. And for our records, we used law 6 to get there. Now I look at my remaining expression, and I look and I look and I look, and can I find any laws that look like they apply there? And I can't spot any that look 
uh, like they readily apply and as I said I'm not amazing at simplification so for me this final expression is the simplest form I personally can find so let's use the same approach and we'll try a different problem okay so I've actually found a relatively easy one but it will allow us to hunt for a few more laws so we're going to deal with B or B or C and not C and you might be thinking oh man so many B's together and so many C's together this must be easy so let's start hunting we'll start with the left B or B so remember that B could be replaced with A or could be replaced with C it's about having the same variable on both sides of an OR so have a look if you can find it and I've spotted here law 13 so if it's A or A then it's just A so in our case B or B means it's just B and we'll keep the rest of the expression as it is because that's a new step just indicate that we used law 13 to get there so we've simplified the left half let's have a look at the right half C and not C so let's see if we can find something that looks like that and we've got down here we've got law 15 the law of contradiction so if you're ending a variable and it's not it's never going to be true because if one is false and the other is true they're not both true and the other way around so with the not of itself it can never be true so law 15 is the next step and that means that we're left with b or false b or false what is this one going to be so looking through we've got law 26 which says a or false so if it's using an or then the answer is going to actually be whatever the variable is because if b was false false or false would be false if b was true true or false would be true so actually the answer is just b and we used law 26 to get there now resulting in just a b there's nothing more we can do to simplify that further so really anytime you simplify you start with your expression you i would always start with brackets first and i start hunting through my laws for something that applies and then i apply it so Hopefully that's a bit of, enough of an explanation to get you started with simplification. In the computer science course that I teach, you simplify to the degree at which you can, but if you find simplification very difficult, um, then don't stress too much about it. It's not assessed very heavily. Okay, so basic simplification should be enough to get you by.